Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Israeli jazz artist Omer Kringle. We spoke with him on June 2nd, 2020 about his new 2020 CD, Ocan Project, which is bringing his life journey and view into one creation. He's been to Cuba, Colombia, Peru, the United States, Spain, Angolia, and to Israel to capture amazing friends and the unique sounds and voices that are on this recording. He's got a great story. Enjoy. I am located in the in the south of Israel in the Negev desert. Uh, I am living in a kibbutz, if you know what it is, like a small community. Okay. Uh, uh, do you hear the word? Yeah, 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 yeah. How's everything going there? Yeah. Uh, these days, you mean like uh, with with all the mess? Or yeah, the, with all the, with all the mess. <laughs> I, um, to be honest, here we were in a, in a um, kind of a, a bubble, you know, it's a, like small community, like a small village, uh, and we we not we not um, feeling it so uh, so hard or that difficult. But uh, in Israel at all, um, it's plus minus. We are in a good situation, although. The numbers are we 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 get to uh, back to a uh, kind of routine now, uh, but the numbers are um, uh, increase now a, a little bit. But I hope it's a uh, it's a part of the process. Then, <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. Well, thanks for taking a minute out today. I really appreciate you taking some time. I appreciate uh, it. I appreciate uh, you and. and that you invite me into. It's really an honor to, to be your guest. Absolutely. My pleasure, man. And, and So you got a project, the OCAN project, that's coming out, that, that's, that's coming out during a pandemic. You know, people might have a little bit more time to listen to it, but you can't do anything live. Talk to me a little bit about your feelings on releasing this album. Yeah, it was kind of weird. Um, uh, but... Um, I think uh, uh, I was taught um, to release it, uh, although the the weird situation, and also uh, Okan. I mean, this project is is never uh, get li- live yet. Uh, then I, I uh, on this side I I I, I never uh, uh, taught yet. I mean. Uh, then it was it wasn't an uh, um, you know it it it, it was uh, it was it was it wasn't missed uh, the, the the live part. Talk to me a little bit about how you started noticing things were getting into a pretty uh, bad situation, like maybe early to mid March when you knew that jazz was going to kind of stop for a while. <laughs> wow! To be honest, I I. I I was um, I, I was not uh, in in a stress or something, uh, and I and I have a um, few more things I, I I also made to for living now. I mean, in the last um, uh, one and a half year, uh, except uh, my my work as a musician, then plus minus I I was I mean I was good. Uh, but um, yeah, it's, it's it, it was catch catch me more in in the in the side of the of the album release, and etc. So talk to me a little bit about your beginnings in jazz. Like, where you were born and raised, and kind of how jazz became your life. <laughs> uh, okay, I raised in in a, also in a kibbutz in another kibbutz, uh, which uh, named uh, Kibbutz Veri, and. Something in the age of six, I think so. We got, I got the my first, um, my first um, uh, compact disc, and my father had a, um, a collection of, you know, of albums. Uh, I think one of my first I heard it's uh, it's the Count Basie Essential, uh, and. Uh, he had um, also uh, a CD of Pat Metini, um, uh, one of Chick Corea, and also one of uh, Keith Jarrett. <laughs> then it was like, 
I, I start from there. I mean, to to just um, listen to to my father album and you know and wonder, wow, what what, what is th this music? <laughs> so, what do you like the best about being a musician? The um, wow, <laughs> difficult question. Um, I think it's my best way to express myself. Um, also to connect with uh, with other musician, with uh, with fans, also with uh, with the crowd. Um, but I think it's 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 part of my native language. What was the first live jazz show you ever saw? Live, I think it was it was a free jazz show. Um, of an uh, Israeli saxof um, saxophone player, and and it, yeah, it was really weird to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but but it was really interesting uh, as well. Um, and then then maybe I, I I saw a few few uh, few concerts, few shows in in um, in a local festival here. Uh, which called uh, uh, a lot uh, uh, a lot jazz uh, festival in the Red Sea, um, um, but I don't remember uh, exactly the specific ones. What jazz music did you listen to growing up? What albums? Any any other influences on your playing? One of my first influences was uh, Bad Power. Um, and also others pianists. Um, um, yeah, but that was a really um, huge inspiration. Um, also, um, Nat King Cole, which I I listen and I listen to him and uh, learn many of uh, many songs uh, from. I mean, many standards from listen to his. Uh, uh, to his, uh, you know, to his voice and learning the the lyrics and uh, then and of course that there, there was I was born to uh, you know to a uh, uh, to a fear that it was more easier to you know to listen to to music and to find music. Uh, Michel Petrucciani, which I I accidentally saw him in in mezzo, I think. Um, it was also a, a really a huge inspiration. Um, what else? <laughs> Let me ask you this. If you come to Kansas City to perform live, how would you describe one of your live shows? This specific uh, project or album, it's more... Um, it's combined jazz with other styles, or with other influences. Um, but maybe it's more like world music if I need to to, to uh, give it the title um, uh, then it's like really a mix of world music uh, afro latin funk and jazz with uh, with touch of um, middle east when we do return to live jazz what do you hope everybody realizes about being away from live jazz for this long what kind of silver linings or you know, uh, any like positive things that we might be able to come back with? Okay, uh, um, I think uh, more um, uh, in the big picture, uh, which mean uh, like as a musician, um, also as a, a, as a jazz musician, but also as a human being, that I take this bit to you know to um, uh, to think. Um, um, about some big picture, uh, like you know, uh, the ego uh, of us. Like, what is the the, the important things we are looking for? Um, and this is, I mean, for me, uh, you know, to see the the really important and the really uh, really uh, concentrated in our. In our in our target as a mus as a musician but also as a human being
That's a great answer. Hey, man, thank you for taking some time out today to talk with Neon Jazz. I really appreciate it. Yeah, sure. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Israel, New York City, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to Omer for his time, music, and story. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Davino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com, and for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.